Hey folks, welcome back. I'm David and we're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. This is going to be episode number 21 of the tutorial series on how to build an electric guitar. And in this series, we're working on this guy right here. It is almost done. I'm so excited, I can't wait to hear it. I'm just sitting here now working on the final setup. Um, but in this video, we're going to go ahead and build the humbucker pickups for this thing. Uh, I make my own and I've got my own little pickup winder I made and everything and I'm going to take you step by step through the whole process and show you how I uh, build a humbucker pickup. Anyway, I hope you stick around and check it out and hope you dig it. And if you do dig it, how about you give me a like and subscribe. Anyway, let's get rolling with the video. All right, it is time to make the pickups for this thing. And if you've been following along, you know we're, we're making a guitar that takes humbucker pickups, so that's what we're about to do. Um, I've got everything laid out in front of me that, that I use to, uh, to put these things together with. And I'm just gonna go through the parts real quickly with you, and then uh, we'll jump in to start winding some bobbins. Anyway, I like buying the Stumac kits. Um, this is their Allen Nicot 5 uh, humbucker kit. And it comes with everything you need uh, to make pickups, except for the wire. It doesn't come with wire, which it incidentally is a 42 gauge poly coated wire. I've got this here. I bought that separately. But in the kit, you get your bobbins right here. You get your uh, base plate. This is the Alnico 5 bar magnet comes with it. Um, we've got the two shims. We've got the metal shims that the screw pole pieces go through. And then we've got the little plastic shim that balances out everything. Uh, we've got our screw pole pieces, our slug pole pieces. Comes with the two lead wires right here. That's 28 gauge uh, wire. It comes with your choice of this is, we're going to use this one right here, which is a four conductor uh, um, hookup wire. And it also comes with the shielded uh, one single conductor. It's got a single conductor and then on the outside it's got the braided, uh, braided coating, the pushback coating on it. Uh, I've got that and then it even comes with the little brass screws to screw the bobbins down into your base plate and uh, comes with your uh, mounting screws and springs. So anyway, uh, I, I just like these kits. I've bought uh, individual pieces before too and uh, it's probably a tad cheaper but with this you get everything in one kit. It all goes together. The, the, everything fits properly and it's just kind of easier to do especially if you're fairly new to making pickups like me. I've probably made I guess maybe 20 sets maybe maybe 30 sets of, of uh, uh, pickups. I've made uh, single coils, P90s, and humbuckers. And, uh, and it's tedious work, but I think it's an important part of building a guitar. It's certainly something you could do yourself. And uh, if you're gonna build guitars, I think making the pickups is kind of part of it. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna get that camera reset up over here and we're gonna set up at my little winding machine I made. And we're gonna start winding these bobs and I'll explain what I'm doing as I'm going. Anyway, let's jump in and get going with that right now. So the first thing you need to do is clean up all the sharp edges and any uh, casting deals where the, where the molds came together on that plastic. You want to get all that sharp stuff off of there. These Stumac bobbins are really good, but it still, it still pays to go around and clean it up a little bit. And that's just a little popsicle stick with some 400 grit sandpaper stuck to it. and I just clean off anything sharp or anything that the wire may get caught on. So that's a pickup winder I made. Um, I just watched a bunch of different YouTube videos on it and uh, kind of came up with my own, my own brand of it. And it works pretty good. I've, it's got a counter on it and it's got a, uh, it's got a, a reset button for the counter and it, and it spins at, gosh, I don't know, it'd probably go up to eight or 900 RPMs, I think, at, at the very most. I keep it going pretty slow. I only keep it about half speed. So I tape my pickup uh, wire onto that, uh, that metal block I have there. And I'm, I carefully line up the little collar so it matches the width of the uh, bobbin. And uh, so now the uh, pickup winder is spinning in a clockwise direction, which means the wire is going onto the bobbin in a counterclockwise direction, if that makes any sense. And I'll wind all four of these bobbins in a counterclockwise direction. So once I'm um, confident that my little collars are set at the right width, uh, I'll only have to do that on the first one. But after that, I'll just uh, 
stick the bobbin up there, tape the new piece of wire to it, start winding until I reach the number of coils I want on each bobbin. So once I get rolling along winding, I will stop probably every 500 or 600 uh, winds or so just to check and make sure I'm keeping it smooth and not building up in one area or anything. Just try to keep an eye on it. So this is what you would consider scatter winding uh, because I'm totally doing it by hand. There's no machine doing it. You know, a machine would lay the, the coils on there absolutely perfect lined up next to each other. This is scatter winding and it probably doesn't come out quite as tight as uh, if you wound it with a machine too because I'm just I'm gauging the tightness by how tight I squeeze that wire and you really can't squeeze it that tight because it is very thin stuff. You just pinch it a little bit too hard and it'll snap that wire like nothing. So my winds come out probably a little looser than machine wiring which they say I believe uh, lessens the capacitance which gives it a brighter, more airy tone. But I haven't built enough pickups to, uh, to uh, justify whether or not that's true or not, so. But they do sound pretty good when they're done. So I set out to wind the bridge pickup uh, hotter or with greater resistance than the neck pickup. And uh, you do that by the more winds of wire you have around the bobbins, the hotter the pickup is or the greater the resistance. And uh, so I wound up, I wound the neck pickup, well, one of the bobbins wound up being 4,950 winds on it, and the other bobbin on the neck was 4,850. And on the bridge pickups, I went 5,207 on one of the bobbins and 5,107 on the other one. So you also wind them slightly differently uh, between the two bobbins on the single uh, pickup itself. And, uh, and it worked out, and, and these are usually the numbers I hit uh, with this. So like I said, 7.33 K ohms on the neck and 7.70 K ohms on the bridge. And that's, I, I wind up with very similar results each time. I wound them some hotter and some not as hot, but uh, this particular combination, for me, I like the way it sounds, so I keep going for the same thing. But anyway, as I go through, so I, I wind one bobbin at a time, I label them on the back, and I move on, and once I've done the first one, then I turn around and I do three more. So now it's time to uh, set the lead wires in place, and those are 28 gauge wires, which seem like bridge cables compared to the little wires on the pickups. And uh, even though I think this wire comes pre-tinned, I go ahead and tin it anyway, just to get a little uh, solder on there. I think it kind of helps when you actually go to solder on the, uh, the coil wire onto it. But that's all I'm doing here, I'm just pre-tinning the ends. Okay, so the next step is to solder your lead wires onto the coil wires. and. Uh, so what you have to do is you take the lead wire, or coil wire rather, and you wrap it around the bare end of the lead wire. I usually do between 12 and 15 turns around the thing. And then you solder those two together. And when you do, you have to solder the lead wire so it's, the end of the wire is sticking out past the end of the uh, bobbin about three quarters of an inch. And you'll see why in a minute. To me this is super delicate work and I feel very fumbly doing it, but I still like doing it and, and it's cool that, you know, when you hear the thing play, you know you had, you made the pickups yourself. That's just kind of cool to me. So at many steps along the way of building pickups, I check and make sure the uh, continuity of the wires has remained intact because that little coil wire is so delicate, it's so easy to break one that I'm constantly checking it. And then I also write down the resistance that uh, I record as I'm going to. And uh, so I know next time I go to make a pickup, if I like the way this one sounded, I could try to duplicate it again the next time. 
So now that's a little black uh, masking tape uh, type stuff that uh, I bought from Stu Mac. And I do that because the, the solder on those uh, lead wires is kind of sharp and, and on, you know, it's pointy and has edges on it. So I put a piece of tape uh, below it and on top of it, one to hold the thing in place and two to protect those coil wires under it. So then once, once your lead wires are taped into place and you like where it's at, I take that same masking tape and I run that around and I pull it as tight as I can to kind of pull all the coil wires in tight together. And I'll do a couple wraps around it like that just to, just to kind of help hold everything together. I do not wax pot these pickups, so um, I'm relying on that tape to kind of keep everything tightened together. And now I'll repeat that same process four times. This time I got smart now. I'm using a little alligator clip to hold that wire in place for me. So I'm not pushing it all over my workbench with that solder iron. So now it's time to uh, hook the hookup wires uh, up onto the base plate and get ready to tie it in with your bobbins. And so there's a hole opposite of the end of the bobbin where the wires come out and you run your hookup wire up through that hole and you strip back given about an inch or three quarters of an inch of a wire left and you take the bare uh, ground wire and you solder it to the base plate which uh, not, only, not only grounds the, the base plate but it also is an anchor point so if you accidentally pull on that, that uh, hookup wire too hard, you're not gonna yank it off at the end of the bobbins. So now I take my screw pole pieces and I run them in through the bobbin. I put a little bit of wax on them and I run them in through there uh, to where they're just sticking out of the end. And I put the metal spacer on the bottom and then I run the screws all the way through where the head's sticking out of the top just a little bit. And I'll adjust those later, the actual height of the uh, screws. Once the pickup's in place, I'll adjust them up to, to match the uh, radius of the wire. The, uh, the radius of the strings, I mean. And then the pole pieces, the slugs, sometimes they're kind of loosish and sometimes they're tight. These happen to be pretty tight. So I finally figured out if I held them with my forceps, I could drive them in with my fretting hammer. And that worked out pretty good. I just drive them in until they're flush on top. And they're sticking out of the bottom, probably an eighth of an inch or so. So these are Alnico 5 bar magnets. And I checked, that's a compass right there. And I check and I'm looking for the south pole on them. So I check it and I mark them. And now I take the screw bobbin and it's on its, uh, it's on its little spacer bar. I slip the south side of the magnet up against the screws and the screw bobbin. And then I uh, just run the two little brass screws underneath of it. And then I uh, install the uh, slug side bobbin on there and I put the little spacer under there and put its screws in too. And since I just pulled the labels off of the back of the bobbins, I go ahead and I mark that right now that as the neck pickup. So I'm not confused later. Although all I'd have to do really is check the resistance and I would know what it is. So I discovered after building several sets of pickups that a nice little vise like this to hold the thing would be a good thing to have and it definitely is. So now following the uh, wiring diagram on the, that comes with the pickups, I'm soldering those uh, the hookup wire to my uh, lead wires coming out of the coils. You solder them in pairs and that's a 1 16th inch diameter uh, heat shrink tubing that I slip over the ends and then I heat it up a little bit to, to seal up those bare wires. Mm -hmm. 
So now you have to take those wires that are hanging out about three quarters of an inch past the end and find somewhere to put them because they can't just be hanging out there. So uh, what I do is I loosen up the little brass screws in the back of the bobbins to give them a little bit of play where they'll spread out a little bit. And then I take those forceps and I very carefully tuck those uh, ends of those wires in between the two bobbins. And it takes a little bit of effort, but uh, once I get them in there, I tighten those screws in the back back up. And, and then I go around. This is a fabric tape. It's also a tape I get from Stu Mac. It doesn't come in the kit, but uh, I buy that tape from Stu Mac, and I think it's their vintage, you know, uh, pickup tape or whatever. And that's the same width as, as the bobbins are. So I go around and I pull really tight because you can really pull on that stuff being fabric. And I pull really tight and I make sure everything's tucked in really tight and nice. And I go around it and I tape it. And that's kind of the final tape in there that holds everything together. is it. Of course I'm going to check the resistance again. And this being the neck pickup, it wound up being 7.33k ohms or 7.33 thousand ohms. And I can't wait to hear what it's going to sound like. So the last thing to do on these pickups is to solder on the uh, chrome cover. And so I take it and I sand off the chrome on the inside of those covers a little bit, expose some of the bare metal under it. And I just uh, push them all the way down tight on top of the bottom bobbins. And uh, it takes a minute to heat up that metal because you've got a lot of metal you're heating there. You heat it up and you just put a little drop of solder on either side. Well, folks, that is how I make my pickups. You know, I know you can go out and buy your own pickups and everything, and there's a lot of great brands out there, and, uh, but there's a real sense of satisfaction when you make your own. You know, they make the whole guitar, you're actually making the pickups too. And I've got a lot to learn still. I know uh, I, I'm, I'm getting better every set I make, and, and eventually I'll get into where I could figure out how to tone shape and everything, depending on the, the components that go into the pickups and the winds and all that kind of thing. But it's a learning process, and I really love the whole thing. All of guitar building is a learning process to me, and it's really been cool. Anyway, I'm glad you stuck around and checked it all out, and I hope somebody got a little something out of it. Anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful week. God bless you, and we'll see you all in the next one.